latest iteration, the program has opened its doors to a new batch of startups. So we wanted to make today a platform for an in-depth look at the Accelerator program. So once again, with that, please welcome to the John Kills X Accelerate Virtual Open Day. So uh, to start things off, I'd like to take a few seconds to briefly run through the agenda for this evening, uh, just to make sure that all of us are on the same page and that there will be no surprises and everyone is aware of what to expect this evening. So we'll be starting off with the program structure and the details about the John Kills X Accelerate program, after which we'll be jumping right on into the fireside chat between the judges, the mentors, and the partners of this event. So please do stay tuned in for that as well. And afterwards, we have uh, the speech coming out from the representative of the Slascom, uh, apologies, coming out from Slascom, uh, who has taken the time to be with us here today in this evening as well. And uh, who better else to speak about the success of the John Kills X Accelerator program than the previous winners uh, of uh, the event itself. So we'll be calling upon and listening in to two of the previous winners of the John Kills X Accelerator program as they share their thoughts and their ideas about this event. And to wrap things up, we'll be jumping on into the Q&A session, which will be hopefully about 15 to 20 minutes to answer any and all questions that you may have. And just adding on to that last point, at this moment, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter, apart from this Zoom conversation. So no matter what platform you are viewing this on, uh, whatever social media you are on at the moment, uh, you can uh, send us in your questions from any of these uh, chat boxes on any of the social media and our panel will be able to answer your questions to the best of their ability. So that is, once again, the structure and the agenda for this event. And having said that, I believe we can jump right into the first part, which is the introduction to the program structure and details of the John Kills X Accelerate program. So uh, to start things off, I would like to invite the program lead of John Kills X, Mariam Musa, and the head of John Kilzex, Vishant Vijay Singha, to kick things off. So, Mariam, Vishant, the floor is yours. Hi, guys. Mariam here, fellow founder of Quickie.lk, an e commerce and logistics company in Colombo that has now been acquired in entirety by a logistics conglomerate in the island. So, as your program lead, I will be with you every step of the way guiding you throughout. So firstly, I'm going to talk a little bit about the key highlights of uh, John Keels. We've been in operation. So JKX has been up and running for five years. And in these five years, we've had three programs. The first program was in 2015, JKX 1.0, which was a business idea competition. And then in 2017, we evolved into a fully fledged startup accelerator with 2019 following suit. And today we are here to talk to you about JKX 4.0. So in these five years, we have supported 50 plus startups, made nine investments and two follow on investments. So speaking of investments, I'll tell you a little bit about our dynamic and dy diverse startup port portfolios that we've invested in. So we have Blue Lotus 360, which is a SaaS ERP company, Urban.LK, which is a premium online store. There's Viduhala.LK, our EdTech startup, Helios P2P, Sri Lanka's very first peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, Sense Agro, an agri-tech startup, iLoan, a loan aggregator for SMEs, Direct Pay, a payment solutions provider, and gender, a platform that detects cardiovascular diseases. So moving on from our portfolio, before we move on from our portfolio startups, just for your reference, we have Helios P2P and Sense Agro, both of who have won follow-on funding from John Keels X. Now I'm gonna take you through the program structure of JKX Accelerate. So we are currently in our application phase. The application phase began on the 1st of December, 2021, and will finish on the 30th of this month. So make sure to put your application, submit your applications in on time. And if you have any questions, do use the Q&A section of this open day to send them across to us. So once all your applications are in, we'll be pushing selected applicants into the pre-accelerator 
So the pre-accelerator teams will be announced in March and the actual pre-accelerator will happen from March to May 2022. So after the pre-accelerator, once you're good and ready, that's when we move on to demo day, which will be on June 2022. And this is where you get to pitch your startup and also win follow on investment, sorry, seed funding of 5 million rupees. Once you have passed the demo day phase, you will then get, uh, get forwarded into our accelerator, which will be from July onwards. And thereafter, either during the accelerator or after the accelerator program, you can apply for follow on funding with us. Next, I'm just going to tell you all a little bit about our application platform. So we are hosting all our applications on an awesome platform called MetaBeta, where you get to create your profile, invite your co-founders, your investors, your mentors. And most importantly, you can use this exact same profile to apply for any other track or program that we might have, which we will be speaking to you about shortly. Your video pitch, make sure that it's on YouTube on a public link and that is copy pasted onto your, onto your application form. And do note that we are investing not only in your startup, but in you as, in you as well. So make sure that it's a video featuring you and your co-founder describing your company. The application form will also, it's not really, a, you don't have to submit it in one go. You can take it step by step and we will not be able to see anything until you actually click the submit button. Rest assured, your privacy is guaranteed. We will not be sharing any of your details to any external parties or other applicants. Now, I would like to hand the floor over to Vishan, our head of John Keels X, to describe a little bit more about our program. Thanks, Mariam. Hope I can be seen and heard. All good. I'll just dive into the details uh, of our pre-accelerator program. So we'll be shortlisting up to 30 teams for this program, which will run from March to May. Uh, the objective, the overall objective of this program, three month program is to get you ready for that investment. So ready for acceleration. Uh, so we'll run a various, uh, run various trainings, workshops, uh, progress reviews, which, have, which I will go into detail here. Uh, our curriculum is based uh, on a framework by the name of Disciplined Entrepreneurship, which is a framework developed at MIT. A uh, very simple 24 step process that covers everything uh, from the problem itself to your beachhead markets, uh, to your business models, to your unit economics, uh, testing key assumptions. So basically everything that gets you ready for your minimum viable product. Um, we will have Tuesday meetups where we invite our business leaders at John Keels and also our networks uh, to share their knowledge, uh, to brainstorm ideas with you where you can also pitch your solutions. Uh, we will facilitate legal HR finance workshops. Uh, these are basically startup essentials that tend to get ignored sometimes, which are essential in getting investor ready. Uh, we would have progress reviews. We will check in with you every now and then to see how you're faring, to see how your businesses are uh, and how ready you are for demo day. And of course, we will practice your pitch multiple times. Uh, so this is in a sense what the pre-accelerator is. Uh, we'll move on to demo day. So demo day is mid-June, where you will pitch your business, your, your startup to a panel of judges. So the panel of judges will be revealed soon. Um, the objective here is so up to seven teams can win seed funding of 5 million each uh, for 10% of your company. Uh, and you will go into the accelerator with the seed funding. Uh, please note the, that an MVP or a working business is required uh, to pitch at demo day uh, because we feel uh, that you will need this working business to show some amount of acceleration and traction during the accelerator program. So that is a must uh, going into demo day. We'll move on to the accelerator. This is where, where the intensity really goes up, uh, where all uh, the, tra even the trainings we, we set out and you know, set out your objectives and key results for the accelerator program. Uh, the trainings are more focused on growth and execution. So everything from marketing sales to your product, uh, we will connect you with mentors again. Uh, you will be assigned a mentor one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we, we will provide you access to market. And I think this is one of the biggest things we do as part of our accelerator program uh, is where we open out our businesses, our channels, uh, customers, where relevant data systems uh, for you to, we offer JKH in a box, so to speak, for you to come and play and test out your products, right? Um, and you, there was an article done by Articulate on how our networks have helped. I just look out for that 
on social media. I'll just touch on a few examples how uh, Ilon started off their product at uh, Elephant House distributor channels. Uh, Helios, their first customers were the employee base at John Keels. Um, Blue Lotus, uh, who are connected through our networks, uh, and, and the, the list goes on. So uh, I encourage you to have a look at that article where all these examples could be found. Uh, we would provide technical boot camps, training, so tech coaching, so to speak. Uh, we would have ongoing support and weekly reviews. We would connect you with our corporate services. So if you need support on legal document, with your finances, on your accounts, uh, we would provide that support for you on an ongoing basis. Uh, we would have office space, this is the space you can see behind me, uh, free of charge. And the objective of this is not to, not to win that 5 million that you get into the accelerator with, but pitching for this 50 million. So during or after the accelerator period, this is what everyone should strive to achieve. And that is where the real meat is. So LKR 50 million is up for grabs for all the teams that enter the accelerator program. I just wanna to touch a bit about our strategic partners. Yeah, we have our national partner, ICTA. Uh, you will hear from them during the fireside chat as well. Shout out to uh, Sachi and Navy who are on the call as well, been uh, supporting us from the outset and doing great work in the ecosystem. Uh, we have Microsoft, Microsoft for startups. You will hear from them again at the fireside chat. We'll provide technical assistance, uh, uh, connections with the founders hub. You will you'll hear all about this from Annie. Um, and we also have Slashcom. Uh, so Sampath is here with us to talk about Slashcom and their work with startups and how they will support the program. And a shout out to Articulate as well, our media partners who is hosting this event as well. We'll move on to our experts. Uh, we have Marius on call with us. I just want to give a quick intro to him who will speak a few words after this. So Marius is our lead trainer, uh, who is a, he's a founder himself, an MIT teaching fellow, or MIT mentor, uh, tech stars entrepreneur in residence, uh, and Vlad, uh, a growth consultant and also mentor. Uh, if I could invite Marius to just to speak a few words on his experience. Uh, Marius, if you're on the call. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to be here again. Uh, I think it's like, you know, third time uh, working with uh, John Kills. I first uh, started working in 2017. And it was a wonderful experience coming to uh, Colombo and meeting all the teams and uh, working with them. Then again, uh, two years ago, before the pandemic, another uh, second time for the cohort. And I was impressed uh, in just two years how big of a difference it was not only in the local uh, ecosystem. Uh, I connected like with a lot of players in the Sri Lanka ecosystem, even if it's small, I think it's very vibrant and very growing. So I think it's a great thing to see so many people, like more than 100 people interested in this program. I hope we'll meet at least like with some of them uh, because uh, today I think like being a startup founder is one of the most exciting jobs you can have. The ones that create the most meaning, not only for you, but also for the people around you, for the community, uh, for the country you're in. So I'm looking, really looking forward to uh, connecting and mentoring and uh, teaching as many as possible of you. Thank you, Vishan. Thanks, Marius. Uh, amazing. Okay, thank you once again. Thank you, uh, Vishan. Thank you, Mariam. And thank you, Marius, as well. So there you have it, folks. That is the introduction to the program and the structure of this event. And as mentioned by Mariam earlier, uh, we do have the Q&A section open. So if you do have any questions regarding any of these things which are discussed today and in any future events, if you have any questions, please do feel free to drop your questions in at the Q&A section of this Zoom link and in the chat box of any of the other social media networks that you might be connected to this conversation on. Uh, so with that said, we can move on into one of the key highlights of this event, which is of course the fireside chat between the key, between the titans of the industries rather. So if you do have any questions, ask them as well. We do have the Q&A section open for this as well. So ladies and gents, the theme of the fireside chat for this evening is the importance of nurturing and supporting early stage startups, opportunities, and trends. That is the theme for today's discussion. And joining us for the Fireside Chat, we have the chairman of the Information and Communication Technology Agency, we have Oshita Senanaika, the chairman of John Kills Group, Krishan Balindra, 
the Chief Information Officer of John Kills Group, Ramesh Shanbuganathan, the Director of Developer Relations at Microsoft Asia Pacific, Annie Matthew. And once again, uh, to moderate this conversation, we have the head of John Kills X, Mishant Vijay Singha. So good evening, folks. Thank you for being a part of, uh, tonight, uh, of this evening's discussion. It is a pleasure to have all of you on board uh, this chat. And with that said, uh, Vishant, I believe I can leave the rest of this chat in your capable hands. Thank you, Rasula. I've been looking forward to this chat from the time we got this together. Uh, so for the benefit of everyone, uh, Rasula just mentioned the theme. We will also talk about the role of uh, the enablers in this equation of nurturing early stage startups. So enablers in the sense, large conglomerates, corporations, established tech companies, government and all, all this comes together to create uh, one big platform for startups to thrive. Uh, if we can start off with uh, Krishan. So Krishan, if, if you have any yes. remarks, uh, please do start with that. I, I would like you to touch a bit on uh, our groups, the John Kiel Group's commitment to start up the program, um, the inspiration maybe to get this started in 2015, how it was started, uh, and maybe your views on the momentum we've gained and how the program has evolved. Uh, thanks, thanks, Vishan. Uh, very happy to participate in this event. Um, yes, we started the program in 2015, 2016, and I think if I was to pick one main, there were a number of reasons, but if I was to pick one main reason, it was that we saw it as a responsibility as one of the uh, biggest business organizations in the country that we should support these new startups, um, which have been founded generally by, by younger people where capital was needed, but not, not just the capital, but also the kind of corporate expertise and experience that we could bring to the table. So, uh, you know, ma mainly, you know, we are not, we were not trying to uh, make a big gain from our investments. It was not like a typical business investment we would make in one of our core businesses. It was really a uh, feeling that we should support these startups more as a responsibility because we knew there was so much we could bring to the table in terms of supporting these young founders. So um, yes, we provide capital, but as Vishant showed, we provide office space. But more than that, I think we provide expertise and experience in areas like finance, legal, corporate finance, governance, um, structuring, board, board composition, and so on. Also, where relevant, but it's not a necessity, where relevant, we bring experience in certain industries, but we can talk more about that, more about that later. Um, so rest, uh, Vishant, the quick response, I think it was more a sense of responsibility as a big group that we felt it's something we must do. Thanks, Vishant, thanks, Vishant. I'll, I'll bring in Ramesh maybe to build on that um, in terms of uh, the open innovation strategy and how all this comes together under the JKX uh, platform, the JKX flag, so to speak. What yeah, uh, Vishal, I think like what, uh, yeah, like what Krishan mentioned, I think we started off in 2016 as a, as a price money thing and we pivoted over the last three programs and this year we have an innovate track uh, accelerate track, which we are, we are launching today, and also an elevate track. So I think we've also kind of learned over the years that open innovation is the way to go, rather than building your own captive closed innovation R&D centers, and also bringing outside in thinking, which actually has accelerated innovation within John Kiss Group as well, right? So I think while uh, I acknowledge what Krishan said in terms of helping founders, but it has also really fueled the innovation thought process within the organization. And also, I think that's the way to go, given today where the world is going. Today, uh, you don't want to kind of uh, own the entire value chain. And the collaboration, co-creation, co-innovation has become a pretty significant part of any organization. And for John Keys, I think it's going to be pivotal 
uh, in terms of our future trajectories as well. And uh, we are excited about uh, the 4 of 2 and the opportunities that it brings and the partners that we are bringing because as John Keys, we are keen to build an ecosystem in Sri Lanka and beyond which the startup founders could really leapfrog and launch themselves into the global arena. Great, thanks Ramesh. Talking about the ecosystem, if I could uh, bring in Oshada here, uh, if you could talk about uh, maybe uh, your opening remarks, if any, and if you could talk about uh, the importance of the likes of ICT, so government uh, working hand in hand with startups, um, any regional peers that we are benchmarking against in terms of uh, government startup relationships and where this is headed in Sri Lanka. Yeah, interesting question. And then first and foremost, um, uh, quite an intriguing occasion where as a John Keyes alumni, it's indeed a privilege to be amongst the colleagues again. Um, I, th I think, Vishan, to answer your question, I think ICTA being the apex digital transformation body of the government of Sri Lanka has a key imperative in ensuring that we empower and accelerate the growth of the startup uh, ecosystem. I'll explain why. Uh, because with the broader vision of the country in terms of creating a dig digitally inclusive um, country em enabled by a digital economy, it's imperative that we pivot but on the startup ecosystem for one simple reason. We are talking about a $3 billion market uh, and a target by 2024. Now that cannot be achieved by just being focused on just a service oriented approach that we've done in the ICT industry. We need to create our own intellectual property. Uh, we need to ensure that we productize or we help productize uh, from through the startup ecosystem. Now for the startups to do that, there has to be handholding, there has to be mentorship, there has to be an empowerment and access to funding, access to uh, new markets, international markets. These are all key pieces that we need to get right. And I think if you look at the statistics, if you rewind back a few years, in 2018, the startup ecosystem was a mere $32 million um, amount. And today we are at a $132 million point. I'm, I'm not glorifying it. I think we have a long way to go, but I think it augurs well to see this sort of momentum being created. And of course, on a, on a far more broader perspective, we see the likes of Senid, I think Sampath is connected today as well. The likes of Kaptruka being oversubscribed, the potential of IPOs. I think that gives a sense of direction for the new startups as well on where they can head along. So I think, um, again, if you take even JKX, it, it's the whole plethora of services that's offered, right? Uh, from a perspective of venture building uh, to a point of mentorship and opening up markets. I think those are the keys. So for us at uh, ICTA, I think the key difference has been, Vishant, we've taken a data-driven approach. Um, if you look at it, the startup genome report, we've done two, and the last one uh, was in 2020, 2021. Now, when we look at a data-driven approach, we can clearly articulate a strategy in ensuring that we look at key focus areas. For us, there's been a few challenges we had to basically look at. If you look at the startup impediment report, that came in, we understood exact impediment points that the startups has. So we have to ensure that we take them out. For example, um, during my tenure at uh, TRC, we've ensured there's a dedicated um, uh, a team right now servicing um, the likes of the startups because startups cannot be on the traditional point of waiting for approvals for months on and months off, right? I mean, it's about the time to market. Um, so I believe, for example, the, the startup impediment report not being just a report and us actioning certain aspect. I think that's an example. Uh, and then the fact that you all mentioned Jendo, which is also being supported by the JKX, um, just on a uh, demo day uh, in December, I think Kirti mentioned his in impediment as NMRA, right? And what did we do just last week? Uh, we took him directly to meet the NMRA uh, leadership alongside me. So I think these are the key actionable points we need to make. There's no point in us talking about it. No point us uh, just giving moral support. I think what startups need is now, you know, actionable support. That is an imperative. Um, and I believe um, in terms of regional benchmarks, um, I personally like, uh, person like the approach that Startup SG is taking, Startup Singapore. Interesting two tracks they have. Um, one for the founder uh, coaching track and the start track. Um, if you look at the founder coaching track, they have this interesting phenomena of um, accrediting third party venture builders with a lot of track record. Um, then you, you have um, the, the, what you call the AMPs, 
So these these are all good opportunities that I think we should look at. I mean, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, if you if you look at uh, accredited men mentor partners that Singapore has, uh, as as I said, it's the AMPS, um, the venture building and the AMPS. I think this is the way we need to go now. Today, literally, JKX is an AMP as well from a Sri Lankan perspective, right? Um, us partnering with JKX. So I think these are the key aspects we need to take off other markets. Of course, funding is very important. Singapore has literally put in, I think, 150 million Singaporean dollars in 2020 in terms of capacitating their uh, enablement of startups. Well, we can't equate to that, but I think we have to do something meaningful. So today, our spiralization program, um, we requested the five times more the budget to ensure that we accelerate startups, not only with in the Colombo region, but as you would have seen across our uh, our, our uh, regional uh, extensions, you've seen the Uber Startup Hub coming along, the, the Sabaragamo Startup Hub, the Candy Startup Hub, the central region. Um, these startup has, hubs has to be empowered with funding as well. Of course, ICTA cannot do it alone. Of course, we need ecosystem partners like you all. Uh, but I think we need to set the impetus and that's exactly what we are doing. So to answer your question again, um, I think we have a tremendous responsibility in making sure that um, we play a part in accelerating and, and mentoring as well as empowering the startup ecosystem. And I think the results say for itself, I think we need to move along on that. Um, international um, opening of um, uh, markets is a key imperative. Again, um, if you look at the soft landing with impact that we've done in Germany, for example, um, as well as the European uh, Sri Lanka cooperation, um, I think these are uh, these are key important aspects that we need to understand. There's sign been significant amount of startups that we utilize this. So the EU slips, for example, I think we've taken ten companies to the European region, for example. So I think these are these are things that we need to propagate uh, and ensure that more and more startups come into it. Um, I think Nidushan is connected today as well uh, from Blue Lotus. I mean, he he on his own has cracked through to the European market, especially the uh, UK. So, I mean, these are examples that we can articulate for the other startups to follow as well, Vishant. That's great to hear, Oshadha. And I'll, I'll come back to you on the on your, your comment on this. We should be just focused on services that we should go down the product roadmap. So, I'll come back to you on that. If I could bring in any, um, uh, Oshadha was talking about some, some of the trends in Sri Lanka. If you could... Talk about some of the trends you've seen in the region. I mean, you've seen a lot in the Asia Pacific region, which you look over. Uh, some of the trends you see is technology that's coming to the fore. Um, some traditional industries that maybe are ripe for disruption, and maybe some technology that you find interesting personally, and maybe why. Over to you, Andy. Thanks, thanks Vishant, and thank you for having me on the panel. It's such an Honor to be with uh, this esteemed panel and uh, the great audience that we have out there. Um, on trends, I think the big trend that we are seeing is um, a lot of people, a lot of young people are giving up their paying, well-paying jobs and getting to entrepreneurship. So that's one uh, big trend. And part of the reason is that uh, I think uh, the millennials have taken control of their own life and have decided to solve some of the problems themselves. Uh, so it's very interesting to see that phenomena. We call it the uh, the, the 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 great refresh, or uh, you know something like that, where the whole uh, talent, where the talent is going, is changing. Um, so uh, a few things come to mind when we talk about the startup ecosystem per se. Uh, one is uh, some technologies which are going to drive disintermediation. Uh, that's a very interesting trend and. Uh, personally, uh, I find that very interesting because the minute you disintermediate and get consumers and uh, producers directly together, there's a whole lot of value being unlocked. Blockchain is one technology um, that's kind of uh, revolutionizing that space. We haven't seen too much happening in the last five years, but I'm just waiting to see the magic that's going to unleash, whether it's the internet, the Web3, or supply chain or um, uh, crypto, uh, all of that. So it's going to unlock a, a lot of value. Then the other thing is um, about democratization. And for Microsoft, this is very key because our um, mission, if you will, is about uh, empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. You can translate that to startups literally. So. Uh, the whole Microsoft for Startup Founders Hub piece is about uh, democratizing access, which has historically been difficult for startups. 
Um, and currently, uh, with the whole remote area, even access to VCs, everything is remote. So world is literally flat uh, now, finally. Um, and uh, this is a great time to actually get digital access to all that Microsoft has. So Founders here Hub is our answer to that. So um, that's, uh, that follows this interesting trend of, um, uh, you know, every idea should be given the support it needs, whether it's uh, funding or technical access or uh, skilling, um, mentorship, all of the things that everybody here was speaking about, all of that. Uh, as we go down that path of technology, the the no code piece is what strikes me the maximum. And I think that's powerful for startups, especially because now it kind of unleashes, you don't need a 10 member technical team to convert an idea that you have into a, um, a, a client facing product, if you will. You can a lot of times um, hand over that process to the domain experts and use Power Platform, for example, that's our uh, piece that we have our product that we have on the no code side. So you don't need, you can use technology without knowing technology. Just imagine what that's going to do uh, for everybody who has an idea, but really don't know tech. I don't know coding. So there's no barriers there. So we're cutting down barriers by unleashing uh, this whole power platform and combine that with uh, GitHub, for example, which is again, driving collaborative secure collaboration anytime, anywhere between people who have ideas, between the coders and all of that. So this, um, the, the, when all this comes together, it, it really is the right place and time for a lot of uh, super good startups to really be born. Uh, and the ones which are already there to, you know, take wings and accelerate. Um, and the last one, which I should not leave, is uh, of course uh, the social narrative of these startups. I think that's a trend that's going to be even more powerful as millennials come into this more and more. Um, and social value is super important for millennials and even for everyone, for all of us. So you will see environmental um, diversity and inclusion, governance all of these taking more priority among startups being designed into the startups ground up rather than that being an afterthought that, okay, now I have 10 men on my team, should I get two women on board? Uh, we move away from that. And I, and I hope that's a trend that's gonna catch up um, if you will over the next couple of years and see people thinking about sustainability, diversity, inclusion, all of that from the get go. So, so yeah, so those are a few of my thoughts. Uh, I hope that gives Thanks, you an idea. Just, just a follow up question on that. So based on the vast experience that Microsoft has, what would you say are the unique strengths that you have that startups will leverage? Uh, that Microsoft brings to the table. First of all, um, um, you know, the best always um, stands on the shoulders of others, right? Stand on the shoulders of giants, if you will. So don't uh, try to recreate stuff like use technology that's out there. For example, say you're trying to personalize your product or your solution, um, and you know you need machine learning to do that. Now, would you get 10 uh, engineers together and try to build a whole data science, data engineering team grounds up? Or for starters, would you use AutoML? And, and you need to be in the space to know uh, those things. But these are technologies which are kind of going to accelerate production, shorten that time to market, which Microsoft brings to the table. So that's one thing. Um, the Microsoft for Startup Founders Hub actually brings a whole lot of stuff for founders together. So any startup can actually apply to the Founders Hub. Uh, and there are four levels there. So depending on, uh, and it's easy, like Oshada was saying earlier, should not be putting in a application and getting a result a month later. Uh, so this literally asks, for, there are three steps. There are three questions to answer and you're um, getting assessed immediately. And then you, depending on the level you are in, you get access to, um, you get access to mentors. You get Azure credits, uh, M365 credits, GitHub credits, and Power Platform credits, all of that. 
So your tech piece is kind of taken care of uh, to get you started. And as you go up the levels, it unlocks more and more credits. Uh, then, of course, uh, because of this amazing ecosystem of founders and partners that we have, there's a whole lot of uh, domain-specific mentors and coaches that are available, apart from Microsoft's own uh, set of um, cloud solution architects and the others that you would get access to at points in time. Um, yeah, and then, of course, the whole skilling piece, um, what else do you need? um funding access to vcs and accelerators all of that so all that a founder needs from an idea moving through to uh, an mvp to finding the product market fit to growth and exit so all of that is considered as uh, the stuff that you need and is made available for founders and founding teams through the microsoft startups founders hub um, now, Microsoft. And also the marketplace, any right? The marketplace as well. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the marketplace, and so that's where you can put in your uh, solutions, and you get. So at the stage where you're wanting to grow beyond the market where you are, so you start with Sri Lanka probably, but then there's a point at time that you want to grow beyond Sri Lanka and get to the rest of the geography. Microsoft becomes a very valuable partner in that game. And some of the uh, interesting things that uh, a startup would want to do is get your uh, product or solution into the marketplace uh, that Ramesh was just mentioning. And marketplace is where all our customers discover products and services. Then you also get access from Founders Hub to our ISV and partner ecosystem. Now that's supremely valuable because when you're trying to expand from one region to another region, one of the easy things to do is to build on top of a partner solution or have partners build their wrap around your solution. But those are easy ways for you to find success rather than figuring out everything about another region on your own. So a lot of the partner uh, ecosystems and systems integrators are available from the Microsoft ecosystem to make your journey of growth and scale easier. But of course, Microsoft is like a massive machine. So, uh, and the scale uh, is what is, is, is going to be brilliant for you to grow and scale. And it has its positive, it has its negatives as well, because it's not easy to navigate uh, the Microsoft ecosystem. And that's where the, the John Keels partnership and accelerator partnerships in different but actually help the startups to uh, kind of make that journey easy for you as well. As much as you get the local uh, expertise and take on Microsoft's global expertise, uh, bring it all together for you as a startup. So it's a lot of goodness uh, waiting for you as you um, as startups uh, come into the Microsoft ecosystem um, and find what you need because different startups would need different things at different points in time. So yeah, depending on where you are, uh, you would find the right uh, level of support and access to markets through us. Thanks, thanks, Annie. Sounds exciting. If I, if I could uh, bring in uh, yeah, Krishan and Ramesh next, uh, just to talk about um, similar to working with a technology giant like Microsoft, uh, Krishan, what is the opportunity for startups to work with businesses at John Keys in the light of, uh, especially considering what has happened in the last two years, the change in consumer behavior and everything that, that is built around that? Um, what would you feel? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the case is stronger than ever to partner with a group like John Keels. Um, and what I spoke about earlier, of course, we will have all the corporate support like finance, accounting, uh, legal, corporate finance, governance and all that. But leaving that aside, what the two years of the pandemic has done for all our businesses is it has accelerated the need to digitize. Now, you know, we were very much in the public eye in April as the uh, pandemic started because of the supermarkets and we were the only supermarket chain that had an online offering. And everyone 
in Colombo at least seem to be trying to get on our website to order from us. And as it was impossible because we were used to doing a couple of hundred deliveries a day and we had thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people trying to log in. Uh, so we were forced to accelerate and I think our uh, uh, offering, digital offering has advanced um, with and the same with so many other businesses. Uh, you All of you would have read about how the tea auctions, which for years and decades have been talking about digitizing and going online, within months they got it done. Right? And the tea auctions we've had in Sri Lanka for over a hundred years. And like that little, little examples of, you know, online um, uh, invoicing in all the businesses. Um, so given what the pandemic has shown us and given the kind of transformation that our um, businesses have had to go through, um, I think for uh, startups to partner us, it's an ideal opportunity. And we are actually more keen than ever now to see the lineup of startups that pitch for this program. Um, and I have been involved directly for the last four years. So we'd like to see that startups that pitch, you don't have to be a fit for our businesses. You don't have to be a fit for supermarkets or for hotels or for logistics. Um, but really, I think the last two years has made it a better time than ever uh, to partner a group like John Kills. And we are waiting to help and work with you. Thanks, Krishan. Uh, Ramesh, in your in your experiences, the group CIO, uh, CEO, JKIT, do you see more businesses going down the, the platforms and ecosystems route? Uh, has traditional IT changed? If so, uh, how do you think it has changed? I think definitely, Vishal. I think in 2013, when uh, John Kiss as a conglomerate, we took a leap of faith in cloud when we embraced 0365, right? A lot of people thought we were crazy. So since then, I don't think we have we have looked back. Right? So today, as a conglomerate, probably 70% of our payload runs out of Azure on cloud. So we are pretty much, in a, from a platform point of view, very geared to play this open innovation ecosystem platform game. Right? Anyone could plug in into our thing through an API. Obviously, we have not gone through the thing in terms of open API, open data, but that will obviously be the next step. So collaborative possibilities, uh, they are, as, as I think Krishan mentioned, pandemic, probably I think a lot of people jokingly say it has been the, the most proven chief digital officer, but I, I agree, right? Because all these technologies were there and it was around, right? But the necessity was a mother of all creations, all innovations, right? The necessity is what pandemic forced, forced everyone to do. So every, everyone is rethinking, why am I doing this today? Isn't there a better way, way to it? Right? So if you have a better way to it, do, do, have I got to do this myself or can I co-create with someone else? Right? I mean, that's the whole discussion which is full, even if you remember for John Kisex to have the three tracks, we felt, do we do just a repeat of JK3.0 or do we pivot? And so everybody is thinking that way, right? I think that, that is what is fueling all this innovation, all this kind of uh, inertia, which is a good thing, I, I would think. And like Krishan said, I think we, we are selfishly would hopeful that you know whatever the investments that we are making will obviously accelerate our businesses, but that's not the that's not a must have. Right? It's a nice to have, uh, but we are we are very excited about this, and we'll we'll let's see where this goes. Thanks, thanks, Ramesh. Um, also, if I can bring it back to you on on your comment on uh, the services aspect uh, and going down the product path, uh, is there? Given the size of our, of our startup ecosystem, is there, a, is there a need for a niche or a subsect that we need to focus on? Uh, have similar economies sort of taken that approach in your view, in your experience? So, um, Mishant, I, I, I believe right now, I think we are taking an agnostic approach as a startup ecosystem. And I think we should be that uh, for one simple reason, because at the end of the day, as I mentioned, uh, again, the fact that we are working with the likes of JKX, I think what we are focused right now is ensuring that we create an environment for the startups to set up a referral point within Sri Lanka, right? Within Sri Lanka, the startup should be able to test their product, use it as a, you know, a, a test bed, um, not in a bad way, but in a good way, right? Um, it should be a playground for them to ensure that they create a very strong reference. Now, after you do that, 
I mean, most of these um, innovations um, will have potential. I mean, look, if there's a problem statement we as an emerging nation has, um, that there's a high amount of chances that there's going to be another market for that product. Now, if we don't create that uh, referral point within Sri Lanka, we do not give that opportunity for the startups, uh, then we are losing the plot. Because if at the end of the day, if you're not providing them that opportunity to create that reference and basically get that customer feedback, which is key where a startup uh, moves on to the scale up uh, uh, level, I think uh, we, we cannot proceed further. So to answer your question for us, I think it should be um, agnostic right now. But I mean, I mean, we have to be more agile, you know, there has to be more vibrancy coming in. And then uh, you look, I mean, there are certain startups that would fail, but you fail fast, right? And then you move on. Um, so I think that that uh, DNA has worked for us. And there's some interesting products that has come out and basically creating much needed traction on international markets. Um, I don't want to name names uh, unless if I miss certain startups, um, but there are significant um, uh, traction that we see. So I think our focus is ensuring that we create an environment, a conducive environment for the startups. Now, even if you look at uh, the government's circular uh, ensuring uh, anything uh, which is even less than 2 million rupees, although it's, it's, a, it's a baby step, uh, we, we dictated that uh, startups should be prioritized. Um, if you look at the um, production pilot of the potential digital uh, uh, identity card project in Sri Lanka, um, we selected the entity uh, for the mobile app from the startup ecosystem. If you look at uh, the court automation project uh, for the Ministry of Justice, there are certain pieces within the Ministry of Justice. Uh, we have ensured we select um, from our startup ecosystem, the startup SL um, uh, cohort. Um, I, I think this is where we are heading. Um, uh, but of course, within that vision, look, we are going to find a very interesting niches, right? I mean, if you look at ed tech or green tech, uh, there are Tremendous, uh, tremendous potential if you look at even agritech. But I believe personally, uh, green tech is going to be the next wave of um, the highest potential uh, earning earning uh, products coming out. But um, look, uh, right now it augurs well uh, for a smaller nation like us to have much more broader vibrance in terms of what we have to offer. So I think for us, it's ensuring, as I mentioned again, as the Apex Digital Agency, is to inculcate that partnerships, inculcate um, uh, our facilitation across the complete life cycle, whether it be um, uh, initial uh, step uh, seed funding, or whether it's series A or B funding, or whether it's opening up the markets. Those are our key focuses. But I, I don't think, Vishant, right now we should um, restrict ourselves. That, that's my opinion. Understood. Understood, Oshad. Uh, so my, my next question is probably for Osha and any both. Um, uh, if there was one ideal outcome you would want out of a partnership of this nature, government uh, with an accelerator and in Microsoft with an accelerator, what would that outcome be? We just want to hear from both of you on that. Any, you want to go first and I'll take it second. Sure. So, um... Outcome-wise, I think uh, the first is that democratization of access to, I mean, startups that really want and have an idea, a good idea, maybe a, um, a, 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 a kind of a product uh, in, uh, even if it is just a, a small a demo that they're doing, if there is something solid, uh, then the support that can be given that that's something uh, that's at the base level. The, the second uh, thing and the most important thing is to out of them, the best ones which are uh, which can leverage the Microsoft, uh, what Microsoft brings to the table. So this is uh, think of B2B startups. There are also B2C startups equally there, but uh, the startups which can leverage the Microsoft in that we can contribute as well to their growth and scale, finding those along with John Keel's X and um, supporting them to move from that stage from an uh, from an idea to an MVP to a product market fit to growth and exit uh, that journey um, to the bringing it to that uh, set of startups. Finding those uh, startups really is the core idea here because together I'm sure we can uh, provide the support to help them grow and scale. Uh, but spotting those um, startups which are waiting to uh, grow and scale. Yeah, so that's one of the uh, things. And we uh, definitely are looking at it, not just from um, a Microsoft perspective. So whichever country Microsoft is in, uh, 
uh, what is core for us is to contribute to the nation's growth. So the whole inclusive economic growth that we talk about. Uh, so for Sri Lanka, how can Microsoft partner in that? And startups obviously are a core engine for Sri Lanka, just like any other nation for that economic growth. So for Microsoft, uh, one would be at the startup level to spot the, mm, the best ones. The other would be at a country level, whether we are able to support Sri Lanka in that um, inclusive economic growth. Great. Oshada? Yeah, so for me, Vishan, there are two uh, pivot points. So one is uh, basically um, ensuring, uh, again, um, looking at from a government perspective of the digital government acceleration, I think this gives a tremendous platform for us to utilize startups with a new breed of thinking uh, and bootstrapping that you traditionally don't see from the larger sector uh, tech uh, organizations as well. And unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, we've seen the same set of traditional organizations being involved in government projects. So I think this gives us that opportunity to open it up to the startup ecosystem. But number two, uh, following other successful countries, the most important is that uh, we are building an ecosystem of trusted uh, venture builders, as well as, as I mentioned, uh, created uh, mentor partners, AMPS, as we, so we say in Singapore. And I think JK has come into that picture and fits on very well. So it's not just funding for me, which is going to be a critical success factor for startups, right? Um, it's, it's about assisting uh, uh, the commercialization of the ideas through a sustainable approach to making it a scalable business, um, getting the product light right, the solution validated with access to certain customer um, use cases. Uh, I mean, these are all important to um, in, in addition to the funding capital um, uh, orchestration as well. So I think JKX at this opportunity gives that edge. And I think um, this is a perfect example of a public-private partnership in terms of we working together uh, in ensuring that we accelerate our startup ecosystem. I think those are the key two imperatives for me that comes out, the key outcomes. Great, and we're looking forward to collaborating on those e-government initiatives, anything that could come out of that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, uh, we're coming to the close of the fireside chat component. If I can quickly bring in uh, Ramesh and Krishan as uh, two of the judges of this year's uh, iteration. What would you like to see from startups very quickly? Uh, maybe a minute each, if you don't mind. Yeah, so, so uh, I've been a judge from the outset what has really uh, impressed me has been the, the capability, talent, I think the passion of some of the founders. So what I would like to see one is, is that, you know, for us, the key, key criteria is really the uh, uh, assessment of the capability and passion of, of the founders and the key management team. But the other thing, really one thing that perhaps we haven't seen enough of is to see a startup that could really be scaled up at a global global scale, so to you know, my my dream would be to have one of the startups we back become like the next TikTok of of the world. So something really scalable on a on a global scale would be something very exciting. Yeah, very interesting, Ramesh. I think um, I don't want to talk about technology, but obviously ESG is going to be a big bet. Uh, like Krishan said, I think people should stop be, uh, becoming stereotypical and look at really a, a, you know, a problem at scale to solve and truly become a unicorn. I think we would definitely uh, love to fund a, a future unicorn. Yeah, definitely. Right on. Great, great. Uh, so in closing, if I could invite all four panelists very quickly, uh, any parting advice you would have for founders in Sri Lanka looking to make it big? Very quickly, if you can... Maybe start with Osha, then move on. Yeah, I, I think I agree with Krishan and Ramesh. I think the passion and the commitment has to be there. And what I see is the stamina is also important for startups. Certain startups have great ideas, but they run out of stamina. They run out of legs. So I think with this sort of support ecosystem coming out quite strongly, I think uh, one of my key advices is to continue that momentum, you know, the commitment. Uh, it is going to be a tough grind, uh, but you need to bootstrap and you need to have the stamina to continue. And the second thing is, again, uh, why, once you move uh, your startup to a scale up uh, phase, it's important the next uh, hiring that's going to define your organizational culture and the direction of the organization. I've seen a lot of startups also failing at that point as well. So that, that's another key uh, that I would also advise. And But last but not least, 
I think the time to market. You need to move fast and break things, but however, with a value of ensuring that you rapidly improve your product. You cannot wait for the customers to find the faults and the bugs of your product, and there are going to be many. Uh, but I think as long as you have that value a system of focusing on um, ensuring you continually improve your product, I think that's key uh, to success. And while on that journey, I think rapid deployment frequencies are important. So you need to automate. I would also go down into more um, technological fronts. But automate, deploy, go to time, time to market is key. And if you fail, fail fast and move on. That's my advice uh, for startups. Great, great. Annie, you want to fit in there? Uh, yeah, uh, just two things. One on the idea side, find the uh, right problem to solve. So spend time on, on finding the right problem that is scalable and uh, all of that. And the second one is tech is underpinning um, everything these days. So pay attention to tech and deep skilling. So make sure you have the right people on your team who are deep skilled on tech because maybe uh, the, the knowing what technology can solve may take you to a different problem statement altogether or a different solution. So um, that is the second one. And the third, of course, is, you know, don't wait to get the perfect product and out to market, but just get it out there um, and, and iterate and then decide whether you want to drop it or move on with that's the process of a startup, but go through those cycles fast. Thanks, Annie. Uh, Ramesh and Krishan, any closing remarks and advice? Yeah, just, just for me, I mean, advice I would give not just startups, but anyone uh, starting a business or even just coming into the, into the workforce, um, it's just, you know, you will get blows, get up and keep going. Don't get disheartened. Uh, you know, you've got a good idea. I'm sure that you already pitched into us, so it must be a good idea. Uh, we heard about technology, but just some common sense advice, you know, when you get punched, get up and keep going. And what is most interesting from all the current icons, uh, probably the Superman of the current era, Elon Musk, that, you know, he's almost like a genius, but how he keeps talking about how hard he works, you know, the 110 hours a week plus that he works and that that's what makes a difference. If you work harder than your competition, you'll do better than your competition. So some very generic advice, not particularly related to startups. Yeah. Thanks, Krishan. Ramesh, flow is yours to close it. I think, uh, be fearless, live your dream. Uh, don't try to recreate everything from scratch. Uh, plug into the ecosystem platforms and uh, have the collaborative mindset, right? Don't try to own everything. Uh, and I think if I kind of uh, can draw an analogy, uh, build a Lego block, which other people who also could use while you're, you're building your own business. Nice, nice. So big thank you to the four panelists. We look forward to the, the Q&A that will be at the end. We just have a few more segments to go before that. So hope to have you back in just a few minutes. Um, Mariam, if you can pull up the, the next two slides, you can move on to that very quickly. Uh, yeah, so this is, I just want to give a quick brief into our uh, other track, JKX Innovate, that we've launched, which is a complementary track to JKX Accelerate. So Accelerate is our bread and butter startup accelerator program. Innovate is something new we are doing. Uh, it's uh, hardcore open innovation, so to speak, uh, where we will have very specific problem statements, six challenge statements to start with put forward by our businesses and our, our partners in our networks. Uh, there are five challenge owners who put this out. This, the challenges are live on our site now. There are some very interesting challenges put forward by Kiehl's and Smart Warehousing and by Union Assurance in, in customer journeys and how customers can discover and obtain relevant life insurance products on, on risk underscoring on, their, the, on using better data uh, to underwrite insurance. Uh, John Kiel's IT, uh, reimagining digital office experiences uh, using their smart, their latest smart office product. Uh, JKSB on disseminating uh, relevant information to the retail uh, investor base. And of course, from our John Kiel's group legal department as well, there's a interesting problem statements on monetizing 
the standard legal processes. So these are very interesting challenges uh, that businesses are actively trying to solve. And we, uh, JKX Innovate is a platform where we invite startups to come and co-create, to come and co-solve with these businesses. And we've, drew, we've drawn um, inspiration from the Open Innovation Network, which is run by Enterprise Singapore. I think uh, Vishan and MK on the call with us as well. Uh, so thank you for that inspiration. And it's a, it's a proven model. And this is a new addition. So this complements our Accelerate track. So if you're even in the Accelerator, you can work on these problems while going through the Accelerator program. Uh, so the date to look out for that is the Industry Open Day on the 2nd of Feb, where we will meet the challenge owners, where they talk about these problems in detail. The next track is JKX Elevate, uh, which is not a program-based, not a cohort-based uh, program. It's more for scale-ups who can approach John Keels uh, for growth capital, we would have uh, clearly defined growth criteria. So uh, maybe startups three to four years down the line who reach a le certain level of maturity. Uh, they've validated most, I, I wouldn't say all or most of their business assumptions uh, shown year on year growth and they're ready for that, the next wave of their growth. So we would come on board as investors, infuse that crucial growth capital, uh, come on board as in mentors, provide advisory services and ongoing support to take your scale up to the next level. So innovate and elevate are two additional tracks. That's the pivot that Ramesh was talking about. And we feel that these two will complement our accelerator program. So have a look, these are both live on our website as we speak. Uh, I would like to bring in um, uh, our, our partner, Slashcom. So we have Sampath uh, Jaisundar with us, who's the director at Slashcom and also uh, the GM at Senate Business Solutions. So Sampath has, uh, some words for us on how how they are working with startups and how they will support the JKX program. Sambath, over to yeah. you. Thank you, uh, Vishant, for inviting me. It was a very interesting uh, discussion from veterans from different uh, areas. So, uh, Saskom point of view, uh, we have common objectives. So that is why uh, we are always like you know willing to support JKX program as well. As per the sign MOU, we are delighted to support this program as well. So overall, Saskom point of view, we have three critical objectives. One is uh, to build the workforce. Right now, uh, industry direct employment is around 115,000. So we want to make it 200,000 workforce by 2025. And then um, 1,000 startups that is directly linked with uh, your objectives as well uh, to promote and motivate um, young uh, guys to come up with their own ideas, convert them into product and services, uh, and then build the country. Like you know, So we all have one common objective. So within that, uh, we have an ecosystem to support the startup area. Uh, third objective is uh, create $5 billion industry. So even president this morning mentioned like, you know, by 2024, you want to make it 3 billion. Yes, I think like, you know, we are moving towards that direction. So hopefully uh, we can be a leading industry uh, bringing uh, dollar revenue to the country. So those are common objectives. We, are, we, are, we all can work together. Uh, the partnership point of view, like, you know, we are there to support when it comes to mentorships because a lot of uh, industry veterans are with us. So we can appoint them, like, you know, help uh, different areas because uh, accelerators or startups, their requirement can be a little different. Uh, so um, uh, based on their requirement, if you identify their areas uh, where they seek support, we can bring the right person and guide them to go to the next level, like market access to uh, building a global partner network. There can be many areas where we can support. At the same time, there are a lot of uh, training programs are going on, like, you know, funded training programs. We can, we are willing to bring them. Now, simple example, uh, Ingenuity Award, the SRASCOM National Ingenuity Award is happening uh, in March. Uh, application closing is on February 7th. So we encourage all these startups to uh, compete because when you compete, you get a recognition. At the same time, we can push them to global um, um, recognition as well, other award ceremonies as well. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, ecosystem activities happening. And we would like to bring those to JKX program as well. Uh, encourage, we will we'll share like, you know, what we can support, how we how best we can support. And uh, once again, congratulations. This is an excellent program. This, I think, country is uh, uh, one need, uh, need of the hour. So like, you know, we can make a bigger industry uh, to the globe. And uh, I like Krishan uh, and Osha, they mentioned like, you know, the unicorn, next unicorn, Ramesh also touched. Uh, I think like, you know, we should create from Sri Lanka. So uh, thank you very much inviting Saskom also to be part of this program. Thank you, Sampat. Uh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Sampat, uh, for being a part of uh, this evening's chat as well. Uh, so moving on, 
Uh, over the years, uh, once again, the JKX program has connected several startups with funding, training, and connections within the John Kerr's network. So the best way to touch upon this, the best way to learn about this is to actually hear from those who have found success uh, throughout the previous iterations of the JKX Accelerate program. So I would like to call upon two individuals who were the winners of the previous years of the JKX Accelerate program. Uh, we have uh, on this call at the moment, the co-founder and COO of Blue Lotus 360. We have Nitush and Kumar, and we have the co-founder and CEO of Helios P2P. We have uh, Nuzi Mayan joining us as well. So good evening, Nitush good evening, Nuzi. Thank you for being a part of uh, this discussion. So I'd like to hand it over to uh, the both of you to actually take us through your thoughts and to share your experiences about uh, the JKX Accelerate program. So yeah, over to the both of you. To share your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Rasulam. Uh, so for us, uh, John Keels X uh, was a game changer for us. Uh, we entered the program uh, with some validation and some bit of attraction. And mm -hmm. since then, we have been doubling our revenue on a yearly basis. And right now, we have onboarded clients from six different countries. And uh, uh, raising investments from John Keels X, which is a part of John Keels Holdings, I provided us actually a lot of validation in the local and global markets. And there's a lot of advantages of joining a corporate accelerator, especially when it's one of the largest diversified groups in Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, you know, which in any, uh, which with with that it brings a lot of uh, you know industry know-how, which can, which the startups can take advantage of. In our case, uh, when uh, Ramesh and Munadan uh, started mentoring us, uh, we were able to learn a lot from uh, you know the years of experience they have had in the industry. And also when we got introduced to John Keel's IT, Informate, uh, Microsoft for startups, uh, through that we were able to partner with a lot of uh, companies internationally. And one of the best um, examples of, uh, I would say is uh, uh, right now, Sri Lankan cricket legends, uh, Sangha and Mahela, a few of our clients, uh, thanks to some of the introductions uh, Ramesh made. And finally, uh, uh, preparing for regular review meetings uh, with Vishant and JKX team, helped us realize the importance of having a bird's eye view of the uh, business, which helped us uh, strategize our finances, uh, sales and marketing plans. And also it, it brought in a lot of regular reporting and governance, which has a lot of, uh, which has brought in a lot of uh, discipline into the company. So I firmly believe uh, uh, we have raised, uh, uh, you know, funding from one of the best uh, investors in, in Sri Lanka. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nitishan. And uh, Nuzi, if you'd like to add on to that. Um, thanks, Asala. So um, basically, uh, Helio started out as an idea stage startup at the 2017 John Kiesix Innovation Challenge. And, you know, over the years, uh, we were very thankful to the support that we've received from uh, John Keels X. We've been given a space to work out of um, also the mentoring that has been provided to us. Uh, another key aspect that, uh, you know, that I should touch upon is like uh, the initial training that we got in terms of discipline entrepreneurship, as well as what we, we understood in terms of, you know, the, the importance of uh, reporting KPIs, uh, you know, stakeholder management, um, all these key uh, good hygiene factors that you need to, you know, make sure that the, uh, a startup functions properly. So uh, we, we, we received all the support as well as, you know, uh, we received follow-on funding and uh, it's been a great journey so far. And, uh, you know, we're very grateful for the support uh, we've uh, received from them. And I would, uh, you know, highly encourage anyone else who has uh, plans to, you know, uh, explore the program with JKX. Uh, they will bring a lot of value to you, uh, touching upon, you know, like Midushan mentioned as well. Uh, you know, uh, we also had access to, uh, you know, trial out our products uh, initially with the John Keels group. So it, it's a, it's a, uh, it provides a lot of access and connections as well. Thank you. Thank you, Nuzi. So yeah, there you have it, folks. That is uh, Nathoshan from Blue Lotus 360 and uh, Nuzi from Helios uh, P2P uh, talking about their experiences and talking about how they saw success from uh, the John Kills X program. So thank you, folks, uh, for sharing your advice and, uh, you know, motivating uh, the future leaders of startups uh, to be a part of this program. So we do have uh, the Q&A session just around the corner. But before that, I believe, uh, Mariam, once again, we can uh, just take a few minutes to go through the summary uh, and the key dates that uh, uh, that everyone should be aware of when it comes to the Accelerate program. So.
Mariam, I think uh, you can just share the details and uh, the key dates with everyone here as well. Mariam, you're uh, Mariam is on mute. Sorry about that. So as I was saying, what you really need to remember is that applications will close for JKX Accelerate on the 30th of this month. So make sure to get those in. Vishan spoke to you all a little bit about JKX Innovate and the applications will open for JKX Innovate tomorrow. So you can always visit our website and check out the problem statements and see where you fit in. And we are going to have our industry open day for JKX Innovate on the 2nd of February, 2022. So lock those dates in and we hope to see your participation. Amazing. Thank you, Mariam, for sharing those dates with us as well. Okay, so we can move on into the Q&A session. We do have uh, lots of questions coming in, uh, in both the chat and uh, the Q&A panel as well. And we can see everyone is ready for this. So once again, uh, to join us for the Q&A session, I would like to invite the chairman of the ICTA. We have Oshida Senanaika, the chairman of John Kills Group, Krishan Balindra, the CIO of John Kills Group, Ramesh Shanmugunathan, uh, the director of developer relations at Microsoft Asia Pacific, Annie Matthew, the head of John Kills X, Vishant Vijaysingh, and at this time, to moderate uh, the Q&A session, we have none other than the founder of Articulate Asia, we have Enosh Praveen. So Enosh, with that, I would like to hand things over to you. Thank you so much, Rasula. Um, so I, I have a challenging task of packing in a lot of questions uh, within uh, 10, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, uh, but I think we have uh, capable hands here to handle that. Um, so we'll dive into the questions. I think there is quite a few which has come on the chat box. I think we can do a quick rapid fire on this. Um, uh, first of all, I think one of the questions I've been um, hearing uh, when, when uh, people talk to me in terms of uh, accelerators and funding programs, uh, maybe um, Ramesh or Krishan, you can take this. Why exactly, you know, you need to get funded, you know, what's the difference between bootstrapped and funded and there's also another school of thought, you know, people say, chase customers, uh, don't chase investors. Any thoughts you can add, uh, Ramesh, on that? Like yeah. Krishan said, it's not about that we want to throw uh, money at someone, but it's it's about uh, if what we, what we are looking for is it's a great team, right? As I said, ideas are something we, which you could pivot. But if anyone is looking for some seed capital, we are willing to invest, right? So if they can bootstrap and if they have the ability, then so be it. So we can still provide the mentorship, the platform, the access to our corporate services. So money is yet another thing in terms of funding, right? But there are so many other things that we bring as, as John Kisex, right? That is what we would want to elaborate as a corporate accelerator. We've seen as a conglomerate, a lot of the business go through ups and downs, and we know that experience definitely could help a startup. Right? I mean, that's that's where probably I think we are coming from. Maybe Krishan could add to that. Yeah, I think why chase investors? The reality is that you you know apart from everything else, you need you need the funding as well, and if you can't raise it, you know from your own sources, then you have to chase behind investors. That's uh, the reality chasing customers, all that you need to do, but you, you will need capital. So we, we are there for that as well, apart from everything else we offer. Right, okay. So there is another, another usual, um, a very common question that usually comes from you know, early stage startups or people who are aspiring entrepreneurs and um, aspiring startup people, um, is will they steal my idea? <laughs> That's very common. I think even, even Dabmika on one of the videos, he says that you know, people just uh, walk into my room and uh, they say, I have an idea, would you fund it? And when he asks, uh, what's the idea? They say, it's a secret, I can't tell you right now. So any thoughts on that? Um, no, I, no, I can tell you, idea is the easy part. Mm. Idea is the easy part, strategy is the easy part, execution is the difficult part. So mm. converting an idea to something successful, it's much, much more than an idea. So I wouldn't worry about sharing your idea. It's the passion, the capability, all the other resources you you consolidate that's going to matter and getting it done the execution is 99 percent of the challenge so right Oshadha, maybe, Oshadha was smiling i think he has something to say. 
No, I, I think I agree. I, I don't think we should have a phobia of be, the ideas being stolen. And as Krishan said, look, ideas would be just dreams if you don't execute it. But however, <clears throat> from a legal perspective, there are NDAs, non-competes, uh, term sheets that come into the picture when you go into these sort of funding. So, I mean, rest assured, if you go through that uh, due diligence, I mean, you're safe. Um, so I think I think there are there are. It's, it's a very mature model that's been um, executed across the globe. Um, of course, you can get support and assistance even from ICTA on how well you need to go down that path. On I mean, we have been to assist, but again, as uh, Krishan mentioned, I mean, uh, there's no you know unnecessary phobia that we need to create. I mean, uh, that there's a, a path towards it. Proper due diligence and CS and DAs are there, and, and uh, that should uh, suffice. All right. Okay. That's that's great. So before we jump into the rapid uh, fire, some of the questions I would like to also ask uh, Annie. Uh, some an interesting phenomena that we we actually saw uh, firsthand is uh, there were some of the programs uh, last year and early this year, uh, sorry, late last year that we had specifically catered for women uh, and and women entrepreneurship and women in startup. Um, but what we saw was that you know some people who even joined they were quite hesitant. It's not not that we they didn't get the opportunity. They got the opportunity. They were in the limelight, but they were hesitant to you know go out. They were hesitant to participate. They were hesitant to present. Um, and uh, some of the reasons were like you know they were probably uneasy to let's say you know being in a man's world. So any thoughts you would like to add uh, on that, uh, uh, Annie? And that's quite natural. Uh, that that's the, that that's the first thing I would say. If you have ever been in a room where you are the only man and hundred men around, you would know the feeling. <laughs> I'm sure you haven't been in a room like that. <laughs> All our you mean, environments. You mean a, only woman and hundred men, right? <laughs> Uh, you would be the only man with a hundred women in the. Oh, room. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I haven't been, uh, unfortunately. But uh... yeah. and 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 so, uh, as an in a formal presentation or something like that, that's I don't know. Party. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So um, it's quite uh, real the the problems women face and the fact that. Um, uh, men probably do not understand all of that. That part is real because human bias is the uh, one thing for which uh, the only way to overcome bias is through diverse experiences and bringing in diversity and trying, to, there's no one solution for bias, right? And so when um, we often come across this in even tech community speaking that women speakers don't come back a second time because they're the way the men ask the questions uh, are perceived as uh, rude or ab ab abrupt by women, mm. whereas men are just asking that question. That's the way they ask. Interrogatory. So that's the difference, yeah. Mm. And yeah. to counter that, uh, accelerator programs that like this, if you really want to be inclusive, we'll need to acknowledge that it needs uh, coaching, mentoring, nurturing in a different way. Definitely. And, and, and we are absolutely sure that, you know, JKX is giving a, a good platform that, you know, there is always room for diversity and inclusion. Uh, so we'll jump into some of these uh, questions. So there's one question which was interesting. So that is Arunya Sabaranjan is asking, does a working business uh, mean we need to have customers also? Uh, Vishant, maybe a jab at that? Yes, yes. Uh, so, so why I mentioned that was we would look at businesses that are ready for acceleration. Uh, and we won't want you. Uh, I mean, that, that it's not a it's not a total it's not a total no no. But we would want you coming into the accelerator to figure out your initial product or to find your co-founder. Uh, we would want you coming into that accelerator. You know, look into accelerate your growth. Uh, you know, validate your assumptions, test your revenue models, uh, test your cost uh, structures, and really, you know, at the end of it, to to really say, okay, this is what I've learned, and now I need more. Uh, and without maybe your initial customer before the accelerator, that might be hard, although it's not a no-no. Right, okay. Very so there's also another question from Vikas uh, K. Uh, is the program only for tech startups? Ramesh, do you want to take that? Not really. No, okay. Yeah, because uh, what we, when we say startup, what we're saying is, obviously those startups will use some of the tech, but we are not just looking for tech startups, no. Right, okay. There's another question coming in uh, uh, from Mahesh uh, Yogaranjan. 
would you be able to partner with JKX group companies to enhance the services range and sell our services together? That's interesting. So that is the next phase, right? That is the the uh, the innovate phase. But we shall announce the problem statements. So we start mm -hmm. tomorrow. So there are five problem statements which have been listed, but obviously that will evolve, right? So because it's going to be a rolling thing in terms of uh, hackathon. So I think keep probably watching the website, and I, I think you will get more problem statements coming coming along the way. But just to add to that, Ramesh, apart from the innovate stage, even in this companies that get chosen. If it's a fit with any of our businesses, they can start working together possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, also, is, is this uh, entire program going to be uh, virtual or in person? It's going to be a hybrid uh, hybrid version of the program because we feel some of these elements should be in person. It's uh, I think Maria mentioned the start, uh, as much as we're investing in the idea of investing the founders. And mm. it's very hard to get to know the, I mean, it can be done, but it's very hard. It's not that in-person setting where you really get to know the founders. So it'll be right. a hybrid program. Right. So we have a quite long question. So it, it's from uh, a person named Anonymous Attendee. Please put your names in. <laughs> we are not going to steal your name. So uh, this person is asking, following up on what Annie and Ramesh mentioned, would a startup having partnership agreements with much larger corporations, partners, reselling and implementation, their solutions be allowed to apply? Uh, agreements to resell are local. Um, any thoughts on that? So I think we need to understand that a bit clear, clearly because if there are if there are a, a kind of restrictions in terms of the current agreements, then we will have issues. But if, if there are no kind of uh, uh, conditions, right, then we can we can look at that. Right. So one question to uh, Krishan. Uh, so Krishan, you specifically mentioned. Uh, other than funding, you mentioned about expertise and uh, experience that you offer as, as uh, the benefits of this program. Uh, I think namely you mentioned finance, legal, and board composition. Let's, let's, let's take someone who's like really starting out, who doesn't have any idea of all of this, uh, and they're just looking at the money. Uh, and do you think all of these things are important you know, at the very start, at the get-go? And how does all of this you know, play out uh, in the real world? And how does it make sense? Uh, any thoughts from you, Prashant? No, just, uh, of course, it, it will matter because the moment you start getting funding from third-party investors, you have to bring a level of governance into how you operate. I mean, it can be three or four you, three or four of you working out of a garage to begin with, with your own money. But if you're taking funding from others, then there has to be a minimum level of governance. You don't have to have the governance of a listed company. Uh, on the stock exchange, but you have to bring in some governance. And I think that is one area where we certainly can help apart from all the business experience we can bring. But I don't think, you know, you've got to be realized that, uh, you know, as you reach a certain stage, you have to bring that governance in. There is no choice. Right, right. Some, some very uh, uh, thoughtful words. Uh, so I think that's definitely something we need to also look at in, in terms of early stage startups. Uh, another question uh, from Shohan Kulasuri, is JKX interested in startups looking to enhance government and citizen services? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't that's, see why not. Yeah. Any startup which so that's adds another value track to a customer. Also, yeah. That's another track uh, also, I think also that you could maybe mention, we are talking to ICTA to launch a, a government track as well. So definitely we can look at as these are part of this as well. And we also talking to also the in terms of looking at uh, government specific uh, problem statements as well as iteration to our JK, JKX uh, innovate phase. Absolutely. So just to add up on to what Ramesh mentioned, I think that's one of the key value propositions I, I believe, which is uh, a huge differentiator from other accelerators we've been already discussing. And in fact, Ramesh, I think we've also started working on two ideas, a early stage, but um, a momentum is being created. I don't want to mention the two uh, use cases, but uh, I think absolute yes, I think Ramesh, and I think uh, JKX has um, volunteered complete support in uh, assisting these startups. Nice, thanks, thanks, Roshida. Uh, I think this question is for uh, Vishan. Uh, there is a lot of questions coming in, so I think we won't be able to take everything. Uh, definitely we will have, uh, uh, emails and um, social media open, you can definitely reach out. Uh, uh, this question is from Chonil Veera Wansa. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, what makes a presentation or a business stand out at a glance to make it attractive to an investor? Uh, Vishant? Very quickly, size of the problem, 
the market and the founding team. I think those three are the main things that uh, we would look at. Um, I guess at an early stage, it's more the founders, right? Uh, the founding team, what they bring to the table, uh, the unique insights they would bring, the complementary skill sets, uh, their passion, I think their, their commitment most of all. So how the founding team really pitches themselves, their skills, I think will we'll make them stand out. Okay. Of course, okay. the market and the and the, the problem itself. Yeah. Okay. So something very important, right? Uh, when it comes to startups, one of the main things, main areas that um, a lot of startups struggle with is product market fit. Uh, I would also like to you know draw some attention in terms of uh, a classic example is is uh, Kiehl's Online, uh, where you know you start something uh, twenty years ago with with a, with a visionary mindset. Uh, but it takes 20 years uh, for it to, you know, suddenly blow out uh, and, you know, become a success. Uh, but, you know, for someone like, you know, like JK, uh, John Kills, who has a lot of muscle to keep it even running at the background, um, it's possible. But let's say it's a startup who is, you know, completely banking on a, a very revolutionary idea. Um, how do you, from JK's point of view, do you recognize those ideas uh, or do you, you know, reject it outright? Or, you know, how does it work uh, when it comes to product market fit? Uh, for the right time and the right solution. Ramesh, Krishan. Ramesh, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, yeah up to the founders, right? Because the issue is we are not going to uh, kind of, you know, we will obviously validate, we will kind of be a sounding board in terms of testing testing your idea, right? But ultimately, it's, it's your idea, it's your business. So we are not going to say, you know, this is a, don't do this or do this. Because ultimately, we are going to test your conviction as founders in terms of that business idea, whether it could scale, right? So I think, so we use it as a sounding board, that's all, right? So panel of judges, all of us uh, come with maybe kind of years of experience in, in different areas. So use it as a sounding board and, and refine, your, refine your idea and, and all, all we want is to, for you to be successful. Right, okay. Krishan, any thoughts? No, nothing to add. I mean, I, I would re right, okay. really concur with what Ramesh said. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we are almost uh, drawing to a close. So uh, just a, a couple of closing questions. So um, I think we also know, you know, the current situation, uh, you know, how Sri Lanka is uh, moving forward. Uh, so maybe, you know, as a, as a aspiring founder or an entrepreneur, if we ask the question, you know, why, why now and why Sri Lanka? Uh, what would you have to answer, Oshad? Some thoughts from you? Yeah, I, I always believe amidst challenges, you have great opportunities, right? And today, I think Sri Lanka is at an inflection point in terms of setting ourselves and differentiating ourselves from other destinations. Number one, in terms of innovation hub. Uh, number two, in terms of radiating out products that can make impact across the globe. So I believe um, as much as significantly, there's been a lot of negativity is revolving around. I believe the ICT industry's impetus has been tremendous. I mean, as I mentioned again, you know, I mean, we, we have tremendous tractions. Look, I mean, out of 16,000 applications, we have the best co-working space coming out of Sri Lanka. We have the startup ecosystem hero coming out of Navindri Khan of Sri Lanka. We have two uh, organizations that's gone on IPO amidst um, any sort of uh, speculation, you know, I mean, I mean getting uh, oversubscribed exponentially. I mean, and, 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 and we've seen this and the tremendous commitment from our end from the public sector again uh, has ensured that there's a tremendous support. Now, one, one simple thing, I mean, we are still on a zero tax base for startups, right? Mm -hmm. We are on a zero tax base. Um, the recent budget uh, has ensure that there's not going to be even any business registration charges um, mm -hmm. for, for new startups. I mean, I mean these, are, these are absolute actions of intent. Again, look, we cannot control the macro environment or economic conditions, but I believe still we have the best chances to, of springboarding in this opportunity that COVID offers globally. And I think very we true. need to pounce on it. And I think that's, that's all it takes. I mean, you can see the future. True, very true. Absolutely encouraging words, Soshada. Thank you so much for that. Uh, maybe just one last question, any uh, you have someone who's seen uh, startups, you know, uh, in the region. So we would also like to see, you know, because when it comes to uh, probably a lot of uh, entrepreneurs here, they have this island mentality. Uh, it's, it's about the city and, you know, maybe go all out wide to the country. Uh, but the thing is, you know, when you zoom out, you know, the country is so small. So, you know, we're probably stuck here. Uh, but, you know, any, any uh, you know, tips and, you know, thoughts that, you know, we can learn from the regional startups, uh, uh, maybe start us from Malaysia and what you see uh, from a regional perspective. 
regionally i'm very excited about sri lanka um i don't know about island mentality i, I don't think it's there this is one of the hotbed for technical skills and mm. tech is underpinning innovation now so um and of course world over they acknowledge that the next level of innovations that are going to disrupt are going to come from asia just the level of our uh, in india we call it jugad that is you know our uh, quick and dirty way of solving things actually yeah. those things grow into brilliant uh, innovative ideas as well nice. india just has 33 unicorns i think this year so uh, next up is sri lanka uh, there you go so we have the people the skills are just waiting to happen amazing thank you so much all of you in, you know the titans that we have in in sri lanka um and uh, the beautiful island that we have uh, some some words that really resonated with me was uh, krishan saying you know when you get punched uh, get up back again it was like the almost like the rocky movie uh, ramesh told uh, you know build the lego block that everyone else could use uh, some really encouraging words and you know thank you so much for spending your evening with us and i hope it was helpful for the people who participated today are definitely looking forward to a truckload of uh, applications coming in and uh, over to you rasala thank you yes indeed thank you everyone and uh, thank you inosha for taking us quickly through all those questions as well so we can wrap up this event but before we do call it and uh, before we do call it today i think uh, we can just take one more quick glance at uh, the key dates and uh, the dates that we should uh, keep uh, in mind when it, we come to the expo event so mariam i think we can just take a few more seconds to briefly go over the dates once again thanks rasula so what we need to remember is applications are closing for jkx accelerate this month on the 30th applications will open for jkx innovate on the 19th of this month again and the industry open day for innovate will be held on the 2nd of february 2022 Thank you Mariam. So there you go uh, folks those are the three dates that you need to uh, remember. Uh, you have uh, tomorrow and what not. So yeah, so please do keep those dates in mind and please head over to the John Kilsex uh, startup exploration page and please do get registered for the program as well. And that pretty much sums up our evening. Uh, it has been a pleasant one and a half hours just 4 minutes shy. Uh, Four minutes late uh, to ending the event, but better late than never. So, thank you so much for being a part of this evening. Thank you for being a part of this show, and I'd like to thank all the speakers and all the panelists, the judges who joined in, and also everyone uh, of this amazing audience as well. So, with that, we can call it a day. See you soon, and good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you.